Hi there and welcome to the 25th row of the 30 days of 30 minute workouts. Now don't worry that we're at 25 and we're almost done. You can pick up from now and you can start at the beginning. You can do whatever you want to be honest. Today's row we're going to revisit the one where we do four and a half minutes at 22 strokes a minute then 30 seconds fast. Okay and then we're going to do that six times over which will make our 30 minutes. Very simple row but what it's going to do is it's going to hit that kind of mid intensity. You're going to be working relatively hard for those 22 strokes a minute just a little bit more than that five out of ten walking up a flight of stairs intensity but then those 30 seconds hard fast kind of high stroke rate and lots of effort that's going to really kind of tip up into mid intensity get tries to back down tip it up back down tip it up blah okay simple row but you're going to get a good workout i promise you okay so we have to get into a four minute warm-up before we can start today's row and as always we have to set up our machines first now in the concept two that means going straight for the drag factor and setting it to where you want it to be now if you don't know where you want it to be just set it between four or five to the for the time being because too low isn't the problem too high is the problem then you can watch the video I have here on this channel explaining what drag factor is. If you're on a non-concept too, please just set the resistance so you get a nice feel from the stroke but you don't have to heave against it to get the thing moving. Next up if you're able to please set your monitor to eye height so you don't have to look up and you don't have to look down both of which will ruin your posture when you're rowing and finally if you are able to then please adjust your foot plates so that you can come to the front of the machine with your shins in a vertical position. Okay if you're set too high it can get a little bit tough to get there if you're set too low then the strap's going to cut off the circulation to your toes and you're also going to go scooting past and your backside will fly out from behind you and cats will marry dogs and oh, all this kind of stuff you just lose a bit of power that's all right so we'll do this at right about 20 strokes a minute and i just want you to think about enough of a push from your feet as though you are standing up from a squat okay because we're going to work on the timing between our feet connecting with the foot plates and our hands connecting the handle to the machine i will explain as we start all right here we go then in three two one, let's begin. So it's a warm up, so nice and soft to begin for the first minute while we work on the timing between feet and hands. And what you want is both of them to connect at the same time. So your feet connect to the foot plates at the same time your hands connect the handle to the machine. Your feet connect to your ankles, your ankles connect. <laughs> so that push from your feet is able to get transferred into the handle if you have straight arms on a forwards tilt and you push at the same time your hands connect the handle to the machine okay it's a simple concept but trust me it can take ages to get that timing right what you want to watch out for is pushing too soon which just your backside scoots away from you and you lose power or grabbing and pulling too soon and that way you don't get the leg power in so now we're a minute in you can just think about increasing that leg drive so keep the forwards tilt arms straight but push a little bit harder with your feet to take the intensity up to that 5 out of 10 2k plus 18 pace so it's almost like you're walking up a constant flight of stairs. Heart rate starts to rise. You're breathing a little harder, but you can still hold a conversation. You just need to let the other person talk for a while so you can catch your breath. So you're working, but not too hard. And in three strokes time, we'll put one foot on the ground. Two more strokes. One more, so here we go, so unbuckle, put one foot on the ground, continue rowing, try and find a good balance with that foot that's still on the ground, you may want to come onto your toes as you come forwards and then rock back onto your heel as you come backwards, but the point here is that you should still have a good technique it just opens up your flexibility a little bit having only one leg in one more here let's swap feet one in one out oh, crikey i'm just doing nursery rhymes today <laughs> any minute now i'll start doing a few little pigs or or you know it only dawned on me a few months ago what this little piggy went to market meant 
I always thought he went shopping. <laughs> I'm so naive. <laughs> anyway, sorry, more about rowing, more about rowing. Last stroke here, more and more, both feet in. Tighten up your straps, straight legs, row with your back and arms. So swing from a forwards to a backwards lean by swinging over your hips, tilting over your hips, and then pull in your arms right after you start that swing. So swing, pull, then push, swing. Swing, pull, push, swing. It's really important you get used to this timing. Okay, let's roll to the front with straight arms with a forward tilt, and just push out lightly from the front. Because all I want you to do is concentrate on this position as you drive. Arm straight, forwards tilt, and trying to get that timing right between feet and hands. So if you push too hard here, it all falls apart. So I just want you to work on the timing. Get in, hold that position, push with the legs, get the timing right. Last one. Oh, there we go, right. So I'm gonna do what I've been doing so far for pretty much all the videos in this series in 2022, and I'm gonna replay the video from 2021. Uh, and then I will join you in half an hour for the cool down and some stretching. So enjoy your half hour row. Are you okay? Yeah, I think we seem okay. So we're gonna start off 22 strokes a minute, 2K plus 15 to 16 seconds. And then, yeah, and I'll talk with you what's going on. Okay, might as well get into it before I get any colder. <laughs> Here we go then, in three, two, one, and we're off. The 22 is that slightly awkward stroke rate for me. It's probably my least comfortable. Yeah, I'm nowhere near, <laughs> nowhere near it right now. Let's speed up a tiny bit. That's better. I don't know why, it always takes me a few strokes to realize just how fast 22 actually is. I think I was down at 18 for the first three strokes there. Sorry. But there we go. 22 strokes a minute. But I want to be run about two minutes per 500 meter pace to be 2k plus 15. But again, don't worry too much if you surf between plus or minus one stroke a minute or one second. If you were say three or four strokes a minute out or seconds out, then I'd be a bit more concerned. But especially for the first couple of minutes of a session, if you don't lock right into rate and pace, it's not too big of a issue. Now, when we do the 30 second speed ups, I want you to try as much as possible to get back in to your stroke rate and pace as quickly as possible. The point isn't to spend the first minute of the 22 strokes a minute recovering from the sprint by slowing down. The point is to let yourself gradually settle down over the course of that four and a half minutes before then having to go into it again. Oop. My watch keeps on shouting at me. So that's what keeps the intensity up there for this row. If you just slow right down so that you're fully recovered by like 45 seconds in after the sprint, it's not quite the training effect that 
this is meant to give. It might take you four or five strokes to properly get into rate and pace, especially the first time that we go through this sprint, but just do the best you can to lock back into it as quick as possible. Now remember, when it comes to the sprint, just think about pushing harder with your legs to increase the power going in. Your arms will take care of themselves if you push harder with your legs. I'll talk more about that after this sprint. Okay, so we're almost there in three, two, one, let's go sprinting. So, push with the legs. Get the stroke rate up, get the power up. And try to get close to 2k pace. Three, two, one. Back to 22s. So you will feel just that little bit more. Uh, what's the word? Pushed to keep your pace and rate, but let it just settle itself down. And hopefully you'll start to feel your body just ease back after that 30 second sprint. This is why consistency of technique is so good because all you have to do is think about that push from the legs in order to get your rate and pace up. And especially on a session like today, that really does mean trying to concentrate on that powerful body position at the start of the stroke with the forward lean and arms straight. And then pushing with your legs while holding those straight arms and forward lean should mean that the power surges, flows into the machine. And then when you just push in more power from the legs, you don't have to do anything different in order to increase pace. It's all just governed from that leg drive, that hang off the handle that you get when you push with your legs in the right position. just feels 
like a stronger hang when you push harder. All right, so we've got another minute at this stroke rate and pace before we bump up again and hopefully you got the intensity right so you could just feel it rise into that mid intensity coming out of the 30 seconds last time but you should have settled down ready for the next one which is just about to happen in three two one let's go sprinting more of a push from your legs you should hear the tone of your machine increase as you let that power flow from your legs to your arms to the machine three two one back to 22s Ooh. this is a really good session for many reasons physically obviously because you get the double whammy of the low rate fitness boosting row and then the powerful sprints but mentally it's just a lot of fun if you are looking for a row that gives you a mix of intensities doesn't leave you absolutely exhausted but still takes a lot of focus this is a perfect one to come back to Especially if you're looking for something to clear your mind. This one is great. Came into today's session with like a whirlwind of a to-do list still running through my head. between work even making this video but also trying to shuffle around my studio a little bit and make a trying to build a sound soundproof room for my drum kit in the corner I think it's probably debris from that that is sitting somewhere on the rail of this machine which is why I keep bumping but it is just funny how your brain can latch onto something whether it's a moment of conflict 
in your day or something you are trying to problem solve or just something that you're really excited about that stuff can really bounce around your head through the day and through the night but then you sit down to a roll like this where you have to concentrate to hold your pace there's not much room for anything else well, not for me anyway then I'm a very simple <laughs> simple soul so alright, 20 seconds to go until the next one Ooh. right how many? two one here we go let's go sprinting now keep your posture nice and powerful at the front try not to collapse your back forwards past that one o'clock and a hunt for more length last one back to 22s we're halfway there Bon Jovi Whew. I wonder if one day John Bon Jovi's in his home private gym he's like I'm gonna go for a row today but let's see if anyone's made a YouTube video for me to row along with so he types in row along and suddenly he's got me singing at him <laughs> he'd be like no I can't can't escape I don't have a Jersey accent Joyzy I can't escape this living on a prayer not a nice jersey either <laughs> not making fun of them at all I used to be a huge Bon Jovi fan in my teens Bon Jovi Van Halen and Mr Big were like my what do you call it trifecta no triptych of music so I've got a lot of fond memories of Bon Jovi and that song so I bring it up out of fondness I'm not taking the mickey out of him oh, so in the last sprint I was talking about posture and the importance of keeping not only your posture nice and powerful but also not over leaning at the front when sprinting in the hopes of getting more length out of the chain it's really easy to think that if you go right to the front right to the front 
that you'll go faster. But the truth is, there's just a load of power leaks ahead if you do that. If you slide too far forwards, shins past vertical, then not only do you lose time with the extra compression, but that extra compression has a tendency to kind of spring your backside out from underneath you. Same with if you lean dip with your back. Get power leaks everywhere. Too many to mention as we're about to hit the next sprint in three, two, one. Let's go sprinting. Remember, arms nice and straight as you push legs into the machine. Think about pushing the machine away from you rather than thinking about pulling on the handle. Pulling happens at the back. Two, one. Ah, was about a second off there, pace-wise. But yeah, drive out the front with straight arms. Don't grab early and fight the power. Fight the power. Because not only are you wasting power that should be flowing from your legs into the machine, by fighting against it with your biceps. Not only are you wasting potential arm power that you want to put in at the back of the stroke. So straight pull, straight pull. Straight pull. But also, I see so many rowers who grab early at the front of the machine with golfer's elbow or tennis elbow and then If they are also the type that finish really high with the handle, that's when it really comes into bite for that tennis and or golfer's elbow. I'm not saying that my finish is perfect. I do have a tendency when I lose concentration to finish with my elbows too low and my hands slightly up, kind of like this. Especially at power, I'll tend to do that. But when I'm concentrating, I'll have that tiny flare out of my elbows, which keeps my wrists a bit more flat. And so if you do develop tennis elbow or golfer's elbow when rowing, 
once you've had a rest period, iced it and things, when you do come back to rowing, I recommend first off dropping the drag factor so that you're less likely to want to grab early and fight the handle, fight the weight of the machine. And then you can concentrate on straight arms. Because if you get it wrong with a low drag factor, it feels like you're rowing through air. And then when it comes to the finish, really think about the sternum height finish of the handle and wrists nice and flat maybe with a slight outwards flare of your elbows to make that happen okay three two one let's go sprinting Whew. I think I was half a second out there sorry now just by thinking about my posture and back and handle height I've clawed back the pace finish back to 22s <sighs> clawed back the pace that I'd lost when I was just a bit more mindless about the sprints and my arm or arms the last time round. Okay, so we've got four minutes of this 22 section left and then a final 30 second sprint and then we're done so it's up to you how you want to finish do you want to hold the same pace that you've done all of these at in the hopes that if you set your monitor to five minute intervals and you think that you were holding the right pace for the 22s and the sprints all the way through you can compare all six intervals or do you just let this one fly take your last 30 seconds up to as fast as you can Now you can do that while still rate capping to 30 strokes a minute or you can do what they call a fly and die where you increase stroke rate and power to the absolute maximum you can achieve right from the start of that 30 seconds and then hope that you hold it to the end rather than your pace and stroke rate dying on you and remember getting the stroke rate up comes on both ends of the stroke you push 
harder and therefore a faster leg drive but you also get those hands away in the same rhythm they come in at so a faster drive phase will mean a faster finish of your arms due to that more powerful hang off the handle so you mirror the pace the handle comes in at and get it away and over your knees before your knees bend and that way your forward tilt over your hips should be correct too right here we go then in three two one final sprint let's go I'm gonna hold 30 if I can but I'm putting in as much of a leg drive as I can four three two one oh. ah. and just at the end a tiny bit of sweat went in my eye well, I mean, you go into that one thinking those 30 seconds, they're not going to be that much, but they do add up, don't they? Especially with that 22 strokes a minute being a little bit past that walking up the stairs easy. Or if you start to kind of, everything starts to feel a little bit laboured after running at the 15 minute mark, doesn't it? Anyway, shall we get ourselves into a two minute cool down? Hopefully you've managed to have a quick drink. You've maybe wiggled your backside, ease the pressure off your sit bones, off your glutes, and we can get into this. And we'll do this around about 20 strokes a minute that kind of five out, out of 10 pace again, basically your warm up pace. That would have been a quicker way to have said that. So here we go then in three, two, one, and we're off. And remember, do try to keep a good technique here. Even if you're a little bit fatigued, tired after that session, maybe your technique started to break down a little bit towards the end of the row. So use the cool down as a way to try and drill back best practices again. I know I, well, recently as a whole, let alone when I'm working hard, but I've kind of gone back into that elbows down thing where I come and my elbows are more down. And so my wrists end up a little bit kind of bunny, bunny like kind of, Bit rotated rather than having that slight flare out of the elbows in order to keep wrists flat and then that helps with that power connection and transfer through the big muscles in your back rather than my forearms and whew, shoulders so Make sure to ease off the pace over the next 33 seconds, if you haven't already. I was too busy talking technique, but I forgot to ease off the pace. <laughs> but yeah, technique really is just so important. It's not me being a rowing bore. It's about power, it's about efficiency, it's about injury prevention, and it's about enjoying rowing, to be honest. Because when you can row powerfully and not getting injured, and you feel yourself getting fitter, you enjoy it more, trust me. Right, that's the cool down done. You, of course, don't have to stop cooling down. You can continue cooling down, or you can follow me and do some stretching. If you don't have time to stretch, Oh, crikey, take a breath, John. If you don't have time to stretch, then please at least stretch your quads, 
your hamstrings and your glutes if you get the chance. Please not in the shower though. I don't want you to slip and fall over, okay? Because that would be bad, all right? Or you can join Stretchy John. He'll take you through some guided stretching if you have access to space, stretching mat or something. Or I will take you through how to do it on the machine if you don't have space. So put your feet back into the machine. Keep your straps loose so you've got a nice angle between your feet and your legs. Nice straight legs, hands in the air, and fold forwards. You really should feel that pivot point as you fold forwards. You really should feel like it's a hinge closing, okay? As you fold forwards. And like coming into this forwards position, really good. I mean, if you don't feel it in your hamstrings, you're just, something's, one of your body angles is just not quite right, okay? Uh, I think I'm gonna have to do a cut before I go into the glutes because the battery on one of my lights is dying because I can see the light going, there going, it just turned off. So there's going to be a tiny jump cut as I go change the battery and then you'll see me go into doing the glutes. Bonk! As if by magic. <laughs> right, put one leg up on the rail, uh, bring your other foot over so that your heel is in the kind of the crook of your knee. Bring that knee across your body so you have a straight line between your face, your knee and your foot. Hold it in place with that arm and then if you want to hold on to the back of the machine, row machine for stability, you can as you then rotate round into it. Oh mama, I got some tight glutes tonight. The, I think the high rocks training I did yesterday, again, it's just, it's all about the glutes. You just don't realise how all these squats and burpy broad jumps and wall balls and all this stuff really does just get you right in the glutes. Right in the glutes. And then there's an element of running that I'm having to do as well. Which actually, actually I say that, say that as though I'm not enjoying it, but I am. Let's change legs. I, I do enjoy running, uh, but there's definitely, oh, right, so change legs, make sure and do the same thing. Uh, there's a, a difference between running at a nice, again, five out of 10, do 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 pace, let's go for a poodle, and then actually trying to run fast 1Ks, because I'm aiming for, it's not fast, but I'm aiming for like four and a half minute 1Ks right now, so, um, yeah, that's, I mean, some of the guys that are doing this are doing like 315 1Ks, so, uh, I'm not fast by any means, but I'm coming from a, from a point where I just row, I don't run, <laughs> so, trying to train up, speed of those 1Ks. It takes quite a lot of work. Right, stand up next to the machine. Hopefully you have space to be able to do this. Uh, hold on lightly onto the monitor, flick one foot up behind you, and then hold that heel up against your backside, giving enough of a pull back that you can feel that zing, that's, that kind of warmth as you stretch through your quad. Remember, try and keep a decent posture here just to make sure that it's your quads you're stretching rather than your hip flexors or uh, that you're wrenching your knee <laughs> or whatever. And let's change legs. Um, as I like to... Oh, no, he's going to fall. As I like to keep on saying... Oh, he's going to fall again. <laughs> come on. You can do it third time lucky. Third time lucky. Come on. Yeah. Um, hold on to the upper part of your foot, like up at the bridge of your foot rather than down at your toes or up too high on your ankles or something because you're wanting to stretch your quads here. Oh, he's going to fall. Oh, good grief. Um, you want to stretch your quads here. here. You want to be stretching your toes or the ligaments up the front of your leg. Answers in the postcard as to why my balance is so rubbish. <laughs> oh, how many times can I almost fall over? I mean... Can I blame on the fact that I'm trying to look into a camera while doing this? Probably not. Looking into a camera should probably make me more stable. Anyway, Ugh, let's do hip flexors next. So one knee on the ground, one foot in front of you. Have a 90 degree angle with both, so your knee is above your foot and your foot is behind your other knee. I know that doesn't make much sense. Up in your toes. It makes sense if you're watching this. Uh, and then push the hip that has the knee on the ground forwards. Ooh. Um, yeah, so podcast people. Uh, I really hope you understand what I'm on about. However, Matthew uh, Matthew Brown, apologies if I've forgotten your second name. It's could it's you know that way you sometimes get a is that the right thing? But Matthew Brown, one of the um, Facebook people, and obviously someone who watches these videos, has made me a poster, a Stretchy John poster. Uh, it's basically he's taken screen grabs of Stretchy John up in the top corner and turn it into a poster which kind of guides you through all the different stretches that I do in this section. So what I might start doing 
is posting that. <laughs> Change legs um, so that podcast people, you can quickly jump on to maybe rollong.com slash stretch. Can maybe put it there. Um, if you want to see just a quick image of what it is that I'm going through. I haven't done that yet. I haven't actually finished because I need to quickly do some branding on it, put the Rollong logo and stuff on it. So it doesn't exist quite yet. Um, but uh, yeah. <laughs> But uh, yeah, it's a great way to finish that sentence, wasn't it? I'll try and if I get time to do it tonight, in fact, even if I just do a really quick bodge version, I'll throw it up there so that um, you can see it. Because there's no point in me talking about it and then not actually putting it up there. And you're like, well, hang on, when, when are you going to put it up there? So I'll try and do that, okay. Right, let's move on to forearms next. So put your hands together in front of your face, push them together, which should actually activate your pecs as you do that. But then push your hands down in front of you and that'll probably take it take the effort off your pecs and then it now puts it into your fingers because you're pushing your hands together and your wrists and underneath your forearms I certainly feel it right under here okay it's like wrists and there when I do this so um yeah <laughs> I'm really not doing well so um yeah that's twice I did that uh now again I've, I've been using this powerball thing um quite a lot and that does it's weird how it really can take it out of your forearms so i don't know whether my forearms are actually just predisposed to be a little bit on the kind of we need stretched side um but definitely right now i can feel that it's funny it's the two hacks i'm quite a believer in kind of just trying to squeeze things in when regularly you're doing something else so like when i'm washing my hands after going to the toilet um as i'm washing my hands i'll do it as an isometric squat okay so i'm just getting it again to a squat position and kind of hold it there so that, that rather than standing up straight why not i've got 30 seconds to wash my hands i might as well just do an isometric squat uh let's do shoulders next hand straight out in front of you bring it across your body Arr! Um, and then use your other arm to kind of create that stretch across your body. But yeah, so I'll do that. I'll do the same. Well, I'll do an isometric squat when I'm washing my hands. When, as I'm brushing my teeth, I'll do transverse abdominals, which is basically when you suck in your stomach as though you're trying to touch your belly button to your back. Okay, sounds strange, but you're really trying to kind of suck in your stomach. I do that while I'm brushing my teeth and my, te my toothbrush is timed for two minutes. It buzzes because it's an electric one. So I, have to, so I know I'm getting a two minute ab workout while I'm brushing my teeth. Um, and then uh, as I am going about my business in the morning, making coffees and kids lunches or whatever, I use um, the breathe, what's it called again? Power breathe uh, thing. Uh, other arm, swap, sorry, power breathe breathing device kind of it kind of it adds resistance to as you're breathing in so you have to like really kind of fight against it slightly and that improves kind of um lung performance or whatever and then the last one i do is this powerball thing which is um if i'm in traffic or if i'm stopped sorry if i'm driving and then i'm stopped in the car i'll pick up the powerball and uh and use that to uh just kind of pass the time i drive an automatic car so i figure that this is okay um, of course, if any of you are police, then I don't do this. Because <laughs> I don't know whether that counts as not paying due care and attention to the road. Is that the same as eating? I don't know. But again, answers in the postcard. I don't know if it's... I, mean, I wouldn't have thought it's unsafe if I'm just stopped at lights and I'm just like this. Well, I do worry that someone might look into the car and think I'm making rude hand gestures towards them. So, hmm. But yeah, find time to do things. I could, do, I could always swap. I could do like the transverse abdominals, abdominals every time I'm in traffic. Let's do our biceps next while I'm ranting. Hands behind your back as though you're flying. Rotate your thumbs outwards. Uh, and that should stretch. Lengthen the long head of your bicep and give your biceps a nice little stretch. Yeah, so could I... Is there anything I could swap? Well, I can do while I'm washing... can do power ball while I'm washing my hands. I suppose I could do it while I was brushing my teeth. But that might be a little bit like... Um, rubbing your head and patting your stomach at the same time. But then, hang on, what am I saying? I'm a drummer. I'm supposed to have coordination. <laughs> it's a good coordination. If I can't do that and brush my teeth at the same time, hang on, could I? Yeah. No, no. Oh. How strange. Let's do triceps next. Hands up in the air, down your back. And then stretch. And then use your other arm to just kind of help that tricep kind of a bit more vertical, give it a little stretch. Um, yeah. Could I do it while I was making coffee? Mm, unlikely. Uh, yeah, well maybe, I mean, my job, so if you didn't know, I, I make, I'm an editor of making TV programs, that's why making these things, these videos is relatively kind of second nature to me, so um, there's quite a few moments where I'm just sitting there watching a render bar, so you can put on an effect, the computer has to render it for you to be able to see it, so I could always just take my Powerball in to work with me, and every time I hit render, just have a quick whoosh, I could do that 
can do that anyway. But yeah, so all I'm trying to say, sorry, I've just swapped arms, podcast people. All I'm trying to say is that if you can find moments in your life where you're normally just, where you can squeeze something else in, even if it's like watch, sit, sitting watching, and tel, watching television, then you can do stuff during that as well. You can, um, you can do like pretty much everything I just said. You could do just by while watching TV, you could just do an isometric squat through the ad breaks, like every, like every advert do an isometric squat and then you could change and do something else. Just mix things up. If it, like, especially if you're short in time, then it makes sense to kind of look at where you can add these little things in. Um, what you don't want to do is get stressed about it and think, oh, everything's getting on top of me. I haven't done my TVAs and whatever. Pfft. Anyway, right, sorry. Where did we go today, eh? Um, so, uh, let, what's that? this lends itself to wanting to be the hashtag for today, doesn't it? Time hacks? Yeah, you think that would work? If you use just ha hashtag time hacks or hacks for time, time for hacks? I don't know. Something about time and hacks. Um, yeah, <laughs> uh, just as a way to let me know you made it this, this far through the video, you can leave a comment. Doo -doo -doo -doo, I enjoyed this. I hope that's what you're right. You could do hashtag time hacks or something. Hashity hag. <laughs> Hashity tag. Right, sorry. Uh, I've got, uh, who knows um, but where my brain's gone tonight. Tonight, in case you care, I'm having salmon and broccoli pasta. Last night was sausage pasta. Tonight is salmon and broccoli pasta in a nice creamy sauce made with Philadelphia. Um, the garlic Philadelphia. Use that. A little bit of corn flour, a little bit of milk, some onions, some mushrooms. Stir it all together. Yum, yum, yum. Garlic. A little bit of nutmeg as well, just in case. And then some salmon, pasta, broccoli. Yum. Uh, and that's it. So, um, I'm going to go. Is that all right with you? Do you mind? <laughs> um, uh, just to, uh, quickly on, a, on today, I just want to say thank you so much for being part of this. It really does mean so much to me that you let me be part of your life. Uh, you have no idea how helpful it's been to me to, to know that you're on the other side of this camera. So, uh, I just want to say thank you. It is, after all, uh, Thanksgiving today. So, I want to make sure. I know this comes out on Friday and that's going to be a bit confusing. But I record these the day before so I can get all the editing done and it comes out the next day. So, I know. Yeah. So it's Black Friday. So go. Last tip before I go, and I'll say goodbye after this. Black Friday, if you need a television and you see one that's 50% off, you've saved 50%. If you don't need a television and you buy one that's 50% off, you have wasted 100% of your money. Okay? That's the best way to think about that kind of stuff. All right? There we go. So thank you so much for putting up with me. I will see you in a future video. Until then, take care. Be well. Bye. -bye.